Now this is the, the mount assembled. Um, I kind of got it set up last night for balancing purposes, put all the attachments on the tripod, um, did all that last night before I went out to look at the stars. And here is it in a kind of a starting position. The weights are pulled in at the moment into that side and it's balancing okay. Um, and when I put the binoculars on it, I'll have a bit more weight on that side here. But this is it in its basic assembled um, kind of setup. Um, so you have the tripod here, obviously, you have this uh, mounting post here, you have this section which allows the pivoting of the parallelogram um, and also panning by this top adjustment here. So that's nice and smooth. You don't need to lock down any of this. It's, it's designed to be nicely balanced so you don't need to lock down any of it and it works very nicely. So uh, you then got the weights that screw on here. Now I just bought these from Decathlon uh, online rather than having these shipped with the parallel ground mount. That's saved quite a lot on shipping. Uh, and they also took a bit off of the price of the weights as well. So they basically screw on there, tight up to the end there. And then the idea is, is that you uh, can then undo this screw and just take them out a bit further as required until they balance the weight of your binoculars. Now I made a mark last night. Yeah, there it is. So I know no, they need to be out that. Mark with a little pencil just to there, a bit further. And I know that once I put my binoculars, which are about two kilograms in weight, at the end there, that will nicely be balanced. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to just put it back in again, just to make it easy, a little bit easier, just to show what's going on. Um, so what your first job would be to um, fit this part. Now I've got the ultra swivel. Let me just see. So yeah, it comes with instructions. And got your basic instructions here um, which cover a whole just setting up and there's some diagrams on the back now I use this in conjunction with finding that excellent um, thread on Stargazer's lounge uh, but here's some extra instructions for the light ultra swing hinge that's the one I bought um, read that that'll give you some really good advice I didn't realize about that till quite late on um, and then you've got something about this uh, guide home as well so what you will have basically is you'll have this thing here. Um, you need to, uh, here's the ultra swing hinge here, and you basically need to put this hinge onto the end of this block here. This you'll see that there's grooves here, and um, you basically fit that down. Now, initially, this comes with uh, an Allen screw and you need to swap that over with one of the thumb screws that come on this one. Now I didn't read that till later on until I put it up so I had to undo it again. So yeah this the idea is that you can then take this off quite quickly and easily uh, and that just comes off like that and then to put it back on again you just put it on. So yeah by replacing that allen bolt with this thumb screw just makes it a lot easier and there's no fine adjustment that has to be done on this bit there's, uh, there's a little hole for this this screw to go into on the inside but apart from that um, tighten it and then forget about it basically I'm probably going to leave it attached to there just for, for keeping it all together but obviously if you're taking it taking it anywhere you might want to unpack it there now the other thing is you have this hinge there don't tighten any of these up don't tighten any of these up because they need to be kept uh, loose basically. Now this hinge here, that one um, it comes with a couple of bolts, uh, again it's using an allen key and uh, you put the bolts in and they screw into into the metal, there's a couple of holes and then finally once you've tightened them up you put in the, the aluminium rod here for the pan handle and um, when you've got it adjusted to the side you want it to be you can then tighten it up there. So I have I actually have this set up so that the tripod is on the left of me uh, while I'm looking forward through the binoculars. So the objective end of the binoculars will be this side and the eyepieces will be on this side. So I'm looking this way and I have the telescope on that side. That's just how I've done it. So I've got the pan handle here. So this is all very nice and flexible. Um, so after I've attached this to the mount and this uh, has got uh, another bolt that affixes this on to the end here. 
um, and then it's all it's all ready to put the binoculars on and start balancing. So I've got my tri my binoculars here. So putting the binoculars on, um, it's a case of finding the hole in your binoculars. Obviously, mine's at the front loading here, and I've got this uh, deluxe. Uh, what's it called? A deluxe L bracket that attaches on here. So that screws onto the bottom of this um, kind of sliding drawer at the top here. And you can pan it via there, uh, but you can also, there's a, a thumb screw on the inside and you can use this to adjust the kind of fore and aft of the binoculars to balance them. So I started out with a base situation, this L bracket right to the end there like that. Um, and I started it with about midway. So I'm just going to attach it on here. So the idea is, is that you've got this thing that spins round. This locking one here, um, because you can kind of use this also to kind of vary the angle you're using it at. So you can kind of lock this off and again there's kind of a friction uh, washer in there. So it doesn't want to be dead tight. But you do want the binoculars to be dead tight on the screw. So there's another fixing here that you can kind of screw into the binoculars. So I'm just going to just put them on here. It's a bit delicate, particularly when you've got a weight at the other end. Um, so it's, it's definitely good to start off with a, with a weight um, sort of balanced. And, just, and probably the best way to do that is by having the weights so they're not turned in. So I'm just screwing that in now. And we'll get to a certain way. There we are, almost there. And if you want, you can then tighten this one here just a little bit more, just to get it nice and tight on the actual binoculars. But you see, I've still got some movement. No problem with that, that's all right. So, so there's the, the binoculars on, on the tripod. Adjusting the weight so it's balanced at the moment. You can see it's obviously lowering. Um, and I had balanced all this yesterday because you can balance the binoculars and things when, when it's it's kind of uh, at the bottom here. But probably a good next step would be to balance this. So it's kind of roughly about supporting each other. So you don't want these to fall out the end. But I have heard that friction kind of stops them falling too far. Now again, I marked this yesterday so I know how far these weights need to be out, so it's about there, that'll do, and I'm just going to just lock that in just to stop them falling out just in case, and there we are, so it's, it's kind of level there, um, so that's, that's the sort of position now where I can start using it. So with the binoculars on and the weight out, and I already did all the balancing um, yesterday, and that meant making sure that the binoculars basically didn't spin spin over on themselves, so they need to be nicely balanced. Now I found with these binoculars here, Lunt Engineering um, 16 by 70s I had to find that this bolt here actually wasn't quite in line with the centre of the, of, the, of the barrel here. Instead it needs to be, uh, rather than it being right at the bottom here, which I've seen other people doing on, online, instead it's about half, halfway up or a bit perhaps a third of the way up there, and I found that helped balance. And not only that, but you also have to balance um, that same bolt going through the binoculars, and they recommend that the objective lens are always a little bit heavier than the, the kind of the eyepieces, so uh, they also have to be, uh, give a bit more weight to the eyepiece end than the front. But I found that that was about right on these, on these lumps. You also have the extra movement here, now I think that's a new thing. Uh, whereby you can pull this bolt forward and backwards as well to give a bit of extra movement. And also you can move the binoculars that way as well. So a lot of adjustability here. So for standing, um, you know, that's very, that's very comfortable position there to be able to take it above you as your height needs and be able to look practically all the way up, upwards. That's absolutely fine. Very comfortable to do. Um, and if you need a little bit of extra height, probably what you need to do is take the tripod and just pull it up a bit more. And I'll, by the way, this is again the tall tripod here, but it's not only it's only probably about halfway up. It's it's kind of extension, so you know you might be okay with a shorter one, but I'll probably recommend one like this. And as you lower down your gaze, you know happily the parallelogram can cope with that. 
And what's really nice is if you get it angled on something, um, and it just stays there, so you don't need to worry about holding it or anything like that. So you can just look for the eye lens, for the eye pieces, and it stays absolutely still without any kind of movement. Very, very stable indeed. Very happy with this combination. Um, so once you have it sensed on something, an interesting feature of parallelograms is that you can then lower or adjust the height and the object of what you've been looking at stays exactly in shot exactly where you left it so you can get someone else to have a look at a different height and they can see exactly the same thing so that's very nice to do. I found it incredibly comfortable to use um, yesterday, very comfortable to use indeed and I vary between standing up uh, observation and also I have got a wooden bench that I also sit down on and lie back on and that was very, I moved this tripod site to be at the side of me and I could sit down and there was real novelty value in actually being sat down uh, lying back slightly you know, and looking directly up into the stars, it's, it's amazing, very very nice to be able to sort of lie back and just pretty much have this sort of doorway into your eyes opening up, very interesting experience indeed. So really happy with this mount, a lot of versatility. What I found actually was, I've only got very limited space in my uh, backyard, what I found was, was that I didn't need to really spin it around all that much. I could get a lot of movement with just the binoculars and this extra hinge here, so this would do for a uh, southwestern view here absolutely fine and if I wanted to look in the opposite direction I could just take it around slightly um, use the hinge just to have a look that way instead so I didn't need to maneuver the hinge an awful lot because I was worried for sort of limited space in the yard but I could get away a lot with doing that and what I found was so again this would be a southwest direction and then I could turn around and look in a more northerly direction here and you know Interesting. if you sort of turn this back on itself, you can still get all that movement. It slightly changes the way that the camera works, um, but you've still got all that movement, basically. And you can use kind of this extra pivot hinge here, and the binoculars to kind of vary it out as you need. Very nice indeed. I would definitely recommend, if you're going to ship this over from the US, definitely get one of these. Uh, it, what's it called? It's called the uh, Ultra Light Ultra Swing Hinge. I think that really does make it a lot more versatile. Um, and you'll be getting this as well, I assume. And also I recommend getting uh, this, this handle, very useful to have. You can manage without it, but it just gives a little bit more or control that you've got just in your hand here. So, And you can have this on the other side as well. It doesn't need to be on this side. You can have it so that these are facing the other way. You can't swap them very easily from one way to the other. So, um, so you will be relying upon either spinning the whole thing around, which is very fine, you're able to do. Or, as I say, making full advantage of this swing hinge there just to, to get the extra angles without having to turn the whole thing around. So what else have I got to say about it? I was really impressed by how well it's been put together. Um, I would highly recommend that you make marks on it. So I've made a mark here to show how high the binoculars need to be and also um, on this sort of dovetail thing, I've also made a mark here as well. Well, I don't intend to move them very much, but obviously if I'm travelling around need to collapse it, then I will do. And also another mark on here just to show where the weight comes out. I think that'll save a lot of time on the setup. Um, but I, as I say, overall feeling is it's really very manoeuvrable indeed. Um, it doesn't take up too much space. I think, you know, collapse down, it's, it's not too unmanageable. Um, you know, to hide away when you're not in use. And I think it's just so well made. My sort of, you know, breath's been taken away by that, really. I haven't really got any negatives to say about it at all, really. The manuals, you know, take a little bit of getting used to, but I always recommend looking at these, perhaps in conjunction with pictures that you can see online of what other people have done as well. 
Um, the overall kind of initial setup probably took about, well, took, took me about an hour last night, um, faffing around with various bits and pieces. I'd recommend. Uh, well, obviously, cut to open the boxes. I don't think I needed a screwdriver anywhere else. The main tools is going to be the Allen keys here, but you actually do get supplied with one of these, so you'll probably find this does does the job as well. Um, another thing you might like to consider getting is uh, a bubble, a bubble level there, something simple that you can just put on top of the tripod just to just check to see if it's level, roughly level, and you're good to go to put the, the top on. So that will be the kind of the collapsed size of it. Um, what we're looking at there, I don't think I've got a tape measure here, but that's probably about, probably about a metre long, about 30 wide, something like that. So it's not too, not too big at all there. So that's it. Collapsing it down, probably I would take these weights in first of all, just so there's not too much leverage against it. Just holding it just so it doesn't hit the hit the deck and just screw that in. So that's roughly about right. And I'm just sort of semi-supporting it here, although you can let it drop at this point, and that's fine. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna put my thumb kind of on the top there. I'm just going to unscrew my binoculars. So you should find with those weights in, it doesn't uh, kind of tip down too much. But I'm going to just lift it slightly so there's not too much distance for the weights to fall when I finally undo this. So I'm kind of just holding the binoculars here, unscrewing it. It's a little bit tricky. And there's got to be easier ways to do this that other people can talk about, hopefully. Um, and I'm just unscrewing this and I'll keep my hand kind of over the screwed end just so that I can kind of stop the mount should it want to shoot up in the air but no that's that's nicely balanced at that point so um, that's the advantage of pushing in the weights first of all so I can put binoculars away that's fine um, and then you've kind of got this here you could detach it there if you wanted to but I'm going to leave it as it is um, it might well take up less space if I did undo that there, so that might be a consideration. Um, and then this top thing just lifts away. So you probably want to get it in a starting position or close to, and then just pick it up here. Just not screw to undo. So that will be the kind of the collapsed size of it. Um, what we're looking at there, I don't think I've got a tape measure here, but that's probably about probably about a metre long, about 30 wide, something like that. So it's not too not too big at all there. So this is the Oberworks tripod, um, a tall height one from uh, Big Binoculars website from the US. Um, so I brought it as part of a package well I put, I put together including a uni mount that I'll show you in just a second but yeah tripod really good well made made of wood obviously mainly uh, you've got a strap there for carrying um, so there's a leather strap that keeps it all together nice here um, at the bottom I was a bit worried about these but they are actually just metal sort of spikes but they're not very sharp so they're actually fine I would have said probably on hard hard floors um, as well as obviously soft ground as well and there's some spikes that you can push push them into the ground via there as well and there. Um, the actual fittings of it are all, all metal so that's really good I wasn't sure whether they'll be plastic or not but I think that's all metal um, and the top part here that's metal as well um, the only bit that like, is plastic is this dividing tray that fits in the middle that we'll look at in a second. Uh, but it's all metal. Now this thing here, this is the attachment by which the uni mount fits onto the end here. Um, 
and it's it looks like a custom made thing. I, I wasn't sure if a three three eighth of an inch bolt was going to come on there instead, but and this thing it's a little bit difficult, but this unclips there. And it all falls out of my hands probably. And there you go. And that thing can be taken away. So I suppose you can use that for a tripod, this fitting as well. Um, or all the overworked binoculars that they've got. But for this mount, it's fit perfectly. Uh, very well made, nice metal steel screw there. And I guess the change of it being a 3 8 of an inch bolt, which is what I think they used to do, is the fact that perhaps this is a bit more more sturdy to put the to put the tri to put the binoculars on. Now my one criticism if any is that I don't really like the way the legs come together. There's a sort of plastic hinge there that the spreader fits to and it kind of all go down to hitting on the same point. And it's kind of a plastic fitting that as well so with a kind of a metal bolt in it. I don't, don't like the way they're clanked together very much. Um, so that's my only sort of thought about it but having said that there is a strap here that you can strap them together nice and tight so there won't be a lot of clanking goes on um, if you do have to kind of put them in storage or something like that. So that's it.